Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Banica Watches. If you like classy, stylish and unique watches with a little bit of history to it, Banica Watches is perfect for you. They even have the Tim Hardaway edition. So check out BanicaWatches.com and get your watch today. Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Sean Davids. Welcome back to the show. Let's talk some old school basketball. Now, with the Last Dance documentary dominating NBA world, I want to make sure that my second favorite player of all time doesn't get forgotten. Now, with Michael Jordan being my number one, Larry Bird being my number two. So in this video, I want to cover a Larry Bird story, or let's say my favorite insane Larry Bird story. But before we start with this video, a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. It's really appreciated. And I would say, let's dig right into it. In the mid-1980s, you had some of the most iconic players in NBA history, if it was a Magic Johnson, a Dr. J, or a Michael Jordan. But even until today, everybody wants to know more about Larry Bird. The guy that can't jump was super slow, but some way somehow was still able to give you 30 points a night. It's kind of funny. In the last couple of months, I spoke to many NBA legends of that era, and they all basically said the same thing slow and can't jump? I gotta be talking about somebody else but Larry Bird. Now, since the game today is a completely different game in comparison to the 80s and 90s, players like Larry Bird are mysterious. Hearing all those crazy trash talk stories and then seeing that this guy was actually able to back it up is just crazy. I mean, the things that Larry used to do are so bold and funny and just to think that Larry used to trash talk the biggest names in the games is just incredible. For example, when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird became friends and the Lakers and the Celtics were playing against each other, there was that one game where Magic had to sit out and watch the game from the bench. And what did Larry Bird do? He walks to Magic and says, man, I'm sorry you're not playing, but I'm gonna tell you what, since you're already here, I'm gonna put on a show for you. Hmm. And what can you say? Larry kept his promise and had a great night and after every bucket, he looked over to Magic. Or who can forget the game of the Boston Celtics versus the Atlanta Hawks, which to me is the second best Larry Bird trash talk story. But when you played against somebody, do you remember? Well, you had the Bird night. I had the Bird Northern night. Northern yeah, Northern. yeah that, was, that was a tough night. Yeah. But when, when a guy is literally coming up the court calling his shots, uh, and, you know, Bird talked a lot of trash. Uh, um, and that's in New Orleans. That's in New Orleans. And that game, we're on the free throw line. And he's like, he literally says, um, left side <laughs> over uh, across the three. And you're listening to him. That's that's a tough feeling. I think Bird uh, went by the bench one time, too. He fell in the bench. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, <laughs> and he called that one. That was the one where he fell in it. He literally said, oh, no. uh, off the glass, into the trainer. And, uh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. And so... Um, it was a bad night. Bird, 14 seconds, he got fouled. He hit the shot. They're not going to count it. And Bird falls into Joe O'Toole. Well, it's kind of hard to top a story like that. And I can definitely understand that this is one of the favorite stories of many Larry Bird fans. But to me, I got a different one. In the playoffs of the 1985 season, the Boston Celtics again would face the Los Angeles Lakers in the finals. The Lakers, with the help of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson, defeated the Celtics four games to two to defeat the Celtics for the first time in Lakers finals history. Boston could not believe it since they felt they had the better team. For the 1985-86 season, the Celtics made some major changes to their roster and would have one of the best passing teams of all time. Well, it makes it easy. Anytime you can work out of the post and, and, and you can go and, and set flare screens and down screens for other players and, and then keep the ball moving, it keeps the defense off balance and, and it makes them work hard on the defensive end. Has 18 points. Oh, what a nice pass by Walton to Bird. I would feel like Larry and, and Bill were probably two of the best passing big men 
in the history of basketball. That Celtics team was so good that many of their games were already decided even before the fourth quarter started. The problem with that was that players with the competitive edge and drive of a Larry Bird sometimes would get bored and mentally check out of the game. One of those nights was the 6th of December in 1985 when the Boston Celtics played against the Portland Trailblazers. At that time, the Blazers were not yet the powerhouse that they would later become since Clyde Drexler was still relatively young. That night, Larry Bird had an off night and only shot 34% from the field. What many people of the media overlooked was that Larry still had 11 rebounds and 7 assists, but still the Celtics lost by 18. Both teams would meet again on the 14th of February in 1986 after a long road trip for the Boston Celtics. Larry was reminded by the press and media that he had a bad game against the Blazers. Bill Walton recalls, Larry told us all and the media even, tomorrow night's the last night of the trip and I'm going to play the game left-handed. This was crazy, even for Larry Bird. The Blazers obviously also read the newspapers and decided to put the very athletic Jerome Kersey on Bird to make sure that Bird's promise would be an empty one. Thoughts on tonight's matchup? Another lineup change by the coach. He's installed Jerome Kersey in the starting lineup. Well, he's put a tiger in the tank. He feels that Jerome Kersey is going to give him some aggressiveness, particularly against Larry Bird. Now it was on. The game started and Larry Bird did what Larry Bird does. told all of us and the media, he said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip, I'm going to play this one left hand. So when you look at the matchups, you'll see Kiki Vandaway handling Scott Wedman. Of course, Sam Bowie will handle Robert Terry. And the assignment for Jerome Kersey is to be able to handle a hot shooting Larry Bird. Larry Bird. 10-6. Bird is open. Larry Bird over Kersey. Doesn't matter where he is. Jackson. Rebound aid. Well, Bird's still down there. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that when a guy. Coming down to the three minute mark. Second quarter. Wedman for Paris against Louie. Too far. Bird's there. 47 46. 16 points for Larry Bird on the parish. Then Johnson and Bird. Tied again. Feasted for Larry Bird. Bird with the left hand and it stays. Left hand, right hand, both hands. And he aims for Bird. 590. Bird with 37. Point time. Everything has come from the outside, so you really don't take advantage of your advantage. And they got three fouls real quick, penetrating. Bird. Looks good, and he's fouled. Shot clocks at eight. Clyde. No, no whistle. Rebound, Bird. They're trying to tie. Ten seconds. You see the tie. Larry Bird ties it. Blazers want time, they call it. Six seconds to win this thing. The game went into overtime and Larry Bird now started to use his right hand more often. Up until that point, he already scored more than 20 points with his left hand. Robinson for Bird. Now that is a shot you can't give Bird. You can't give him the wide open. Right on Larry Bird away from the ball. Down. Dennis Johnson, 10 seconds the clock. You watch it count down. Blazers up by a point. Now, Bird can't beat you right there. you got to keep them under control. They don't. And the Blazers have timeout with three seconds remaining. As Bird goes to 47 points. This shot would also be the game winner. Bird scored 10 out of his 21 field goals against the Portland Trail Blazers with his left hand and finished the game with 47 points, 14 rebounds and 11 assists. The Celtics won that game 120-119 in overtime. Bird was later asked why he used his left hand so much and he answered, he wanted to save his right hand for the Lakers.
It doesn't get any cooler than that. All right, you guys, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video because I just found out apparently that also helps. Also, if you want to hear more podcasts with me and former NBA legends like Tim Hardaway, Dennis Rodman, Dominique Wilkins, Alonzo Morning, and so on, please check out the Basketball Time Machine podcast on iTunes and on Spotify.